Hello and welcome to the studio. I'm Peter Stjanovic and this is Into the Metaverse, Opportunities for Technology Leaders. Now I'm going to start with you, Eileen. Can you just give us a bit of insight into what your thoughts are on the metaverse? How, do, how have you translated the metaverse and its potential for technology? What a fantastic question. Firstly, thank you, Peter, for having me in this discussion. Hi, everyone. Um, how am I interpreting metaverse and what does it mean for me? I actually don't think it's anything groundbreaking, I'll be honest. I think there are lots of metaverses or businesses that are calling themselves a metaverse. Um, I think we need to be careful with the term the metaverse because that implies all of these metaverses are joined together somehow and it is just one ecosystem. So from my perspective, from the outside looking in, I actually think it's where all of these technologies are brought together to have um, achieve better outcomes or better experiences. A lot of it's about a feeling and, uh, and uh, accessibility, making it more inclusive. But I do think that those things come at a cost. I, th I think we would want to be a bit careful. So I'm watching it carefully from the outside a little bit of a cynic in terms of when they say the metaverse. I don't know that we're there yet, but there are lots of metaverses that exist. Okay, thanks, Anna. A cautious start. Um, Ian, what are your thoughts? And maybe particularly on the potential for different experiences between people. <clears throat> okay, so um, I was I was going to ask you what would be our definition for the metaverse today, but then I thought that wouldn't be right, so I looked up what an online definition was for the metaverse. And then <clears throat> to bear out Eileen's points, this isn't necessarily new, is it? It's sort of uh, something about interactive virtual experience between people and things. And I, I, I do have a slightly, um, also slightly skeptical views to the, the metaverse, because I think sometimes these things can be branded and branded and opportunistic for an, an organization to, um, <clears throat> to scoop up all possible applications but has been around for some time hasn't it i mean we've people have oculus uh, rift and you know surgeons have been um you know working with virtual reality or you know different views of things and we've talked in the past about digital twins and ways people can interact digitally <clears throat> as to what it means um for people i think at the moment we might be thinking about the metaverse in terms of avatars and how we interact with each other and i did sound out some PSCIOs last night on this topic, um, knowing I was going to be having this discussion today. And people said that where they've, they'd had some experiences in the metaverse in meetings like this, it hadn't necessarily at this stage been very favourable because people are even more abstracted from the personal interaction than we would be looking at a screen. It's not to say it won't evolve and it's all a matter of time before finding the great use cases. <clears throat> I think almost pretty much everyone I asked said they'd had some interaction or some experience, but that ex was more like an experiment that hadn't been repeated. So perhaps it's early days to see what the metaverse will bring. Interesting. And also it comes into question some of the definitions that the metaverse provides sure. given this context. Um, Juan, at Imperial though, um, you know, is this metaverse something that either your students are talking about or maybe some of the researchers are considering? Uh, what are the conversations you're hearing? Yeah, so it's very, um, it's very much there as, as part of the conversation we're having um, on a day-to-day -day basis. It, it's being kicked uh, into um, uh, very much the front page for us uh, through, uh, especially last year when Mark Zuckerberg renamed Facebook Meta, um, and um, that, that brought it in, into us, um, uh, created a whole bunch of interest but I think we're still inventing it. We're still experimenting. It isn't something that you can probably define very, very clearly. We're learning uh, how to, um, um, what the opportunities are, how we can leverage those opportunities. In a simple form, we can see how we could have a, a university in the metaverse and deliver uh, lots of teaching and research through the metaverse or, or a metaverse. But uh, for that to be useful, we need the metaverses to be able to interact and, and talk to each other. Um, we need to have some form of digital uh, mm -hmm. currency. Um, um, so it's really difficult to see where it's going to go um, into the future. I think now it's, uh, um, it's really evolving from a lot of gaming mm -hmm. and the gaming platform. So uh, we, we have all kinds of immersive uh, games. 
uh, where you go on, online. Uh, there's platforms like Roblox that went uh, public uh, last year and, and they're absolutely amazing um, ways to develop all these immersive uh, um, experiences. Mm -hmm. um, but um, in terms of business, it's really difficult at the moment to see uh, where the value is. There's um, obviously organizations out there that are experimenting. Nike has created a whole bunch of virtual goods yeah. and, and things. Nike always seem to sort of just get the yes. cusp of things and so and early roll with adopters it. and yeah. So we don't think we'll be um, an early adopter uh, adopter in that space. We um, when the pandemic started, we looked at alt space VR where. Um, and we thought, can we create a, a virtual experience and an engaging experience for other students through some virtual world? And, and we did a little bit of a proof of concept, but it was not really as engaging as, as we thought it would be. Early days. Uh, very, very early okay. days. So I don't think we'll be an early yeah. adopter. In and, and your earlier point about you know connecting different metaverses calls what Eileen said about being careful about calling it the metaverse, because we're not there yet. Yes, we're not there It's yet. still isolated yeah. uh, pockets, uh, for, for want of a better word. Um, Freddie, Juan said it's probably quite early days yet in the business context to think about the potential for the metaverse and experiences. Have you seen any insights um, to the contrary? Any any clear front horses? I, I do share, you know, the, the sentiment that's been put out there already because, by the way, this is not the first time that we've heard yet of another buzzword that is going around, right? And if you look at throughout our career, there's a lot of technology that has come and gone before us. There has been a lot of false dawns, right? But on the other hand, we've also been surprised by many things that has just happened. For example, I remember when I was, you know, building the next generation platform for my company for the internet. And then the next day, just before launch, the tablet came along and they asked me, what is this? And I said, I have no idea, <laughs> right? And then suddenly, that tablet thing became the mobile thing. And so I think if you look throughout the history of, of, of technological advancements, even Bill Gates, when he you know, had the vision of saying, we're gonna build a, like a, a mobile phone where you can do computing, personal computing on a phone. He had the vision, but he did not make that happen, mm. right? So I think part of the answers is not gonna necessarily come from any one of us because right now it's not a thing, right? A thing becomes a thing when everybody knows about it. Right now, it's not really a thing. And therefore, it's just all of us speculating, having different views on things, right? But that time will come whereby because of the way, again, the technology uh, uh, industry has evolved, that critical mass would happen. And that critical mass would then evolve an outcome and a result and a thing that we will all be surprised by. So yes, I share the, the, the cynicism, but I also share the excitement that this potentially may be something new, especially when Meta has invested how much? 180 billion? or planning to. So we cannot discount that level of investment. I mean, they even changed their name, Freddie, yeah. so it tells oh, you everything. Yeah. <laughs> Would that thing be a good thing or a bad thing? Yes, you know, exactly. No surprises. Exactly. But you've, you've also raised some really interesting points. And, and, and Freddie, you, when you talk about those um, products or, or shifts uh, that did change the nature of things. It was all because of the experience. So, you know, in that context, maybe experience is the connecting thread between all of those um, unpredictable changes that we've all gone through. Um, now, Leon, you know, Elswin's all about the experience. So when you think of the metaverse and its potential on the experience, do you think this is all speculative still? Or, or have you seen a potentials that certain businesses have already capitalised on? Um, I think it's interesting from a business perspective because it's certainly an emergent trend. And I agree with everybody here that this is something that is, you know, still taking shape. But there, there's kind of um, key themes that start to emerge around that. Um, and I think they're interested, very interesting. And I think that the reason that there is so much kind of uptake and hype and kind of, you know, Facebook is almost forcing us mm. into that world is because we are looking for the next paradigm. Like you said, we had the, the, you know, the internet, the mobile revolution. We never knew what that's going to cause and where it's going. And we see that there are changes in technology that are potentially becoming the next paradigm shift. So we, as a society, we learn to kind of, um, you know, notice these things. So we're trying to understand where is that going. So a particular specific, huge, successfully um, and, you know, meaningful changes that this brought to businesses there are areas that you can see that happening. You know, there's companies that are setting up themselves around capturing value. There's kind of, I would 
say the metaverse is much bigger than just virtual environments where you know there's kind of web3 themes there's kind of uh, ownership uh, like Juan mentioned there's a, there's a few key themes around here and I think businesses are looking at how they can capture that mm. and if therefore it is still early days everyone um, and perhaps the speculation is rife with what the next 10 years looks like is there anything happening now that we could draw lessons upon maybe I think, Juan, you talked about gaming. Um, some of the metaverse implications around gaming has been transformative and around maybe the VR aspects around education, of course. But has anyone um, across this round table seen anything that have particularly sparked their interest and curiosity in regards to the experience that you yourself found and, and how you could use that to benefit your customer or clients or, or employee base? I'm happy to jump in here, you know, from a being long time in publishing and now in education, right? The, the two things that struck me was that, you know, it's about the content, right? It's also about the language. So if you talk about trying to create an inclusive uh, uh, world, right? Those two things are still getting in the way because if it's in only in English language, either the content or the language, then it stops. But if the potential of this technology is that for example, one of the things I've come across is that, you know, it's trying to develop this capability that allows you to get instantaneous language translation. That in itself is amazing, right? So almost near time, maybe the day will come where it's real time. We're having this conversation in English, but somebody else that is joining us will be listening to that in their own language in the way that they can relate to. Mm. So that for me is one really good possibility that I'd like to see happen. I think the gaming piece is really important. So. I think that there is a lot of, of I'm a gamer, um, and you know, um, a typical gamer is a mid thirties woman. Actually, that's kind of a, is that, you know, a is profile of a typical gamer. Yeah, because if you look at mobile gaming as well, it's you know this sort of wave of um, cultural trend has not entered the workforce as much as yeah, others did. And there's a generation that is growing on coming from these environments and feeling very comfortable with them. So how will this affect uh, our you know, workforce and how we do work and how we communicate as a business and how we do business? I think what you said about communication is very interesting because again, in gaming, gaming has been transcending cultures. You know, uh, people have friends across the globe yeah. that they actually never spoke to before beyond gaming. And the, you know, there's sometimes friends over years and years and years. So how, how this new medium of communicating is gonna uh, come in into, um, into other aspects of life, I think is, is an interesting shift. And I suppose one of the other, be other benefits of, of talking about such a nascent um, trend is that we can deliberate on the ethics before it actually enters into society proper, which is quite a rare thing to do at the moment. We normally think about ethics after the fact. So with everything we've thought about, um, what then should we focus on when considering the ethical implications of something as all-consuming as the metaverse. So, okay, so about um, policing, let's just think a, a little bit about where we, we seem to be generally headed towards metaverse and social interactions. We talked a bit about gaming because uh, we've had, had metaverse type um, situations before where we could model things and use digital models for various things. So if we're going towards like the social side of things, it's going to draw out presumably the best and the worst of human nature, isn't it? Like any other platforms. So it's going to be the same question as how, what do we do about trolls or people that can have extreme interactions because perhaps they, they feel it's a less uh, personal, interpersonal experience. People can say or do whatever they want without thinking of the implications of the feelings on other people. But maybe there are other extreme examples. I'm not just trying to be a, a skeptic, other extreme examples where it could induce extreme empathy, but I'm not sure what those scenarios are. I don't know how it would be policed because it's going to amplify the same difficulties that we're seeing at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. And um, these, are, these are good discussion points. I wonder then, how do you as tech leaders bring about these conversations in senior leadership teams, discussions or strategy discussions if, if the metaverse does have the promise that, that it promises, um, whether it's on policing, wh whether it's on its application for education, etc. How, how do you... How do you recommend initiating these types of discussions uh, with your peers in the business? It's a massively challenging <clears throat> question. Um, 
to answer, I think. Very interesting question and clearly needs to be answered, but it's incredibly complex because if I think of the metaverse as the evolution of the internet, as Ian was saying, and the evolution of how we interact socially with each other through these kind of virtual worlds that we create, it's a very different paradigm uh, that we have uh, right now. Um, and in those virtual worlds, you can also yourself be different personas, right? You can be different avatars, you can be different things because you're not just limited to um, VR or AR glasses, you're, the metaverse is about any device. Um, and so you, it's, it's your next experience. But it feels like a very different experience than what we have now through social networks, through when you insult someone on Twitter or when you harass <laughs> someone on Facebook. This feels completely different. It feels like a complete paradigm shift. And we already had cases of harassment, haven't we, uh, mm -hmm. on these virtual worlds that, that have been created. Um, and, and I think it's an impossible ask to have one organization or one person policing this uh, virtual environment. So uh, somehow we're going to have to um, figure this out as we go along uh, a little bit. I, I wish I had a, a few of the answers. I'm, I'm, I am concerned uh, about the future and some elements as to what's that going to do to us as human beings and how we're going to take those human interactions forward if we're going to be expanding, uh, breaching the physical and that uh, with the I, virtual world. I do have a view on this. I think, you know, because in my spare time, I do a piece of research into IT leadership, right? And one of the interesting things is that, you know, if you look at our roles, it keeps evolving. The word ethics and, and being an ethical leader is coming into our responsibility. But, you know, now, especially now with COVID, digital technology, is do, we do have a social responsibility, right? So things that has happened before, it happened, and then we try to recover deal with the consequence. Now we have a chance to think a bit harder about the consequence before we let it happen. So I think part of it has to be policing is the, 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 the sort of the, uh, the wrapper that allows us to think about that issue. But we got to think about it also from our personal responsibility as a leader. What can we do? What should we do in terms of guiding those conversations and guiding what's happening out there? I think we have a responsibility. Very different paradigm shift. And, and I think we're probably talking about something that's evolving and that's got sure. to materialize. Yeah. Right now, Facebook can put filters so that you don't insult someone or, uh, or, or say, eliminate this leader in, in another country or, or whatever, and they can remove those mm -hmm. filters. Uh, but if we shift the paradigm to creating an avatar, to being a persona, you can't really censor that conversation, can you? Because that conversation is happening much more real time in mm. those worlds. Um, and so that's the difficulty that I have in uh, so, understanding how you mm -hmm. would do that. So, so maybe then, in a business context when preparing for the metaverse, or metaverses, we should be thinking about the right questions we should be asking rather than trying to figure out any answers now. So in that regard then, you know, what, what for you as leaders right now then are some of the most obvious questions you should be asking yourselves or your, your teams or, or perhaps even your customers maybe, you know, to understand what, what, if they want this from you. Uh, where, where, can, where should we be starting? Um, uh, Leon, do you mind uh, cutting into this first? Yeah, yeah, I would love what, to what are the key questions, do you think? Well, I think like our job is to help leaders think beyond the BAU, you know, like think about what they're trying to achieve and how they're trying to improve. And I think this is an interesting subject because this is an emerging trend. And I think we should be thinking about how this affects our business, how, you know, how our processes are going to be changing, what are expectations of our, um, you know, new wave of customers, new wave of employees. And I think the points around ethics are so important because, um, you know, the word policing, um, at the moment, the internet is being policed by corporates. So if you think about the emergence of the internet, the internet that I used to log into, uh, you know, 15 years ago and the internet now are two very different places. And the policing now is done by corporates. And one of the reasons we're having these conversations is because they failed. And, you know, we've seen a lot of uh, um, negative kind of experiences coming out of, uh, of what Facebook, et cetera, have been doing. And that's why it's so live in our discourse. And I think this kind of, um, I don't think it's a technology thing. It's not about metaverse or the internet. This is part of kind of us becoming a technology society. Yeah. How do we deal with it? And I, I loved what you said, Freddie, about us as leaders, we should be thinking about that. It becomes our personal responsibility of how we shape technology in our organization, how we build 
new products and services, how we affect our employees. I think there is a personal responsibility that we all have to take to, you know, to, to think about these things. But the answer, I don't think we have the answer yet. Is it the regulator that is a lot more sophisticated? Is it actually part of the, you know, what's embedded in the metaverse, which is the decentralization and the ownership? Is that part of the answer? Moving away from corporates doing the job, but us doing the job? I don't know. But it's, you know, it's, a, it's definitely something we should be thinking about. Thanks, Leon. So the uh, policing question is a very interesting one, isn't it? And um, we, can, we can go around thinking of who would be the regulators or how would the companies regulate or police their environment. But then every, all the interactions are so incredibly rich and social in nature, aren't they? And interactive. But it's kind of really then does become, as we're discussing in ethics, but a societal question, how we deal with it as a society. And Freddie made a really good point about how we can be prepared ahead and try and understand that the consequences, good or bad, of you know, all these uh, new experiences. So, you know, it just seems to me really important that we understand why are we going to be using the metaverse? Like, there might be really incredibly good reasons, but therefore, you know, understanding why we're using it and are, are we not just using it because we're getting hooked or addicted by some, you know, quick gratification, quick experience or fun that we get from it. Or if that is all we're getting in some instances to understand that, but no, our data is not being used for a, another different commercial purpose. And that's quite it, complex, isn't it? It is. And that goes back to what Eileen was saying in, you know, what would stop people from embracing the metaverse? Maybe it's about the, the privacy and the data that's quite a, a big topic now for, for consumers as well as, as big enterprises. I wonder, therefore, whether this roundtable should have been into the metaverse responsibilities. <laughs> Yeah. For tech leaders, I in, in fact, if I may jump in here, I think the question I think Eileen was alluding to, right? You know, sometimes you can look at the best stuff, but the, the question that we can ask is, it's not just about the benefits, right? Because that's what we all do to create products and sell services. But the responsibility part is about, but what are we doing about safeguarding? Let's say if there's one dimension, right? And then safeguarding is our responsibility when we design that product and services. Mm. So that can that has to come from within, right? Because everybody can only do their own thing. But if you are providing that, what are you doing to make sure that you address that issue also? Okay, last question then all, uh, and then we'll close for the round table. Do you think this is the paradigm shift that it's promised to be? So personally, I think so. I think it's going to take a little bit of time. A lot of things need to happen in the meantime. I, I think we... Uh, there's the open metaverse uh, conversation and, and these different worlds need to connect to each other. We need to be able to create these digital economies that Leon was talking about because without that digital economy, uh, you can't buy something in Fortnite and then take it to somewhere else with you and, and so you're living in, in that space. But I think this is inevitable. I think this will happen as to uh, the, the pace and the shape and, and the form that it will take and how it will evolve from this gaming um, type of platform that we have now, these immersive games that start to talk and interconnect to each other, how it then becomes uh, an extension of our own uh, reality and how we create those digital economies. Uh, but it is going to happen because there's massive shifts. The, the Roblox... Um, 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 experience right now it's it's absolutely amazing it's an incredible platform where uh, it's not only a gaming platform but also for creators where mm. they create all of these kind of games and and, um, and um, you know I think I was reading somewhere last year there were 50 billion uh, dollars exchanged in digital goods wow. uh, in, in all these different worlds. So there's a lot of money, there's a lot of uh, momentum uh, behind this. And it's become, a, uh, you know, since last year, it's very much part of the conversation we're all having right now mm. um, uh, across all sectors of technology. Excellent. Um, Eileen, we're just talking about uh, whether we think the metaverse, despite everything we discussed, is actually the paradigm shift. Yes or no from you, what do you think? Not yet. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to give you a longer answer. Um, I, I think that, yes for some things, definitely, but I think we just need to be a bit careful going forward. We need to be careful that we don't exclude people. We need to be careful that 
uh, we're aware of the unintended consequences. We need to be careful it doesn't drive the wrong behaviour. We need to be careful about um, uh, almost, almost permitting crime and uh, illegal activities as a result of um, embracing a metaverse. So yes, for some things, definitely, but not for everything, not yet. I think it's down, I think Ian mentioned it earlier, it's down to the definition. Right. So, for example, we like to measure things, KPIs and all those things. So if I were to think of what is the one measure that, that potentially can help is that, you know, the whole point of this is that it gives you a, a more immersive experience. So if we can find a way to measure that, then maybe that's how we would know whether we're going to get on. By the way, that's a very crude thing I just said there. The point here is that I would agree it's not yet, but I do see the potential of us going there. I have no idea when it's going to happen. OK. Now, Ian, you're one of the uh, cynics at the beginning. What are your, what are your thoughts? Well, I, th I think I think in some form, however we define it, the metaverse and how we use it likely will result in a paradigm shift. But as with all the other things, if you look look about the things that did result in the paradigm shift, it's not quite as we expect it might be at the outset. And I think this is why we just need to be very very thoughtful as we get into something where it's taking us. Um, everything changed in the, what the last twenty years. The th and the seeds of the change, uh, they didn't seem like they were creating a paradigm shift at the time and something else happened. Absolutely. It's hard to predict. You're right. That prediction always, <laughs> is always going to be hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and let's lastly uh, fall on Leon. What, what are your final thoughts on the debate and, and the potential for the, for the metaverse? Well, I'm a technophile, so I think about technology very optimistically. Um, I think that what I see is there, there's a big shift in um, a few themes around kind of centralization, ownership, and our relationship with the virtual. Our consciousness is kind of migrating to the virtual. It started with the mobile phone, it started with our relationship with social and with kind of uh, virtual representations of ourselves. There's a really big shift. I don't know what is gonna be the end result of it, and for me, Personally, again, from a technology standpoint, the piece that is really missing is the hardware. We don't have the hardware that can support the type of vision that Mark Zuckerberg is trying to sell us. You know, his uh, whole piece was a giant uh, pre-rendered virtual, you know, uh, vir virtual kind of uh, background. The hardware piece is really missing. But I think if we unlock the hardware piece and we can have the seamless experience of the virtual, it's going to change everything for us. Excellent. Well, if I can condense that into a short sentence, maybe the opportunity then really is to consider what the safeguarding proposals for an equitable metaverse is before we actually get to the position of the metaverse, which is almost a, a very unusual position to have actually when given something of this grand scale. So hopefully that's something for us all to take away from. But thank you all for your time and experience and insights today. I really appreciate it. Um, and thank you for watching. This has been the studio and Into the Metaverse Opportunities for Technology Leaders.